Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf. Sorry for my absence uh, last week, in case you noticed with this avalanche of um, Vlogmas videos, you probably didn't even realize. Uh, but I was away for um, a week um, and at my mother's and I don't film there. So anyway, but I'm back and it's almost the end of 2020. Yeah. Um, so it's the time of year that you make new, at least I do, make new goals, you know, clean your bookcase. I spent most of the day yesterday, Saturday, cleaning the bookcases in the little book room and, you know, thinking about 2021. But of course, that also means that you have to, and which means I have to, want to reflect back on 2020 and on my reading goals and see how I did and what worked and what didn't, you know, stuff like that. Um, I leave a link to the uh, 2020 goals video, which I filmed on the 4th of January this year uh, down below. And I listed all the, the various goals and I will just uh, go through uh, them with you and see how I did. Okay, so I have uh, the goals here on, on my computer. Sorry about the lights change when I um, open the the document but you know me I, I can't remember stuff so anyway so I had a couple of goals f f recurring for each month general goals and then I had uh, what I call challenges so the monthly reading goals first uh, read a book off the TBR read a classic read a translated book and read a book by a um, BIPOC or Asian author I did okay-ish, sort of. Um, I definitely did read uh, books uh, of the TBR. Um, I have now, as of, uh, what is it, the 20th of December, I have like 15, 16, maybe 17 books left on the actual physical TBR, which I will carry over to the next year. It's a, a separate shelf, you know, the year before TBR, and then if I don't read them in the first half of the year or whatever, I, or, no, no, let's rephrase that. Um, I, if I don't read them in the first half of the year, or if I look at them and know that I really still would want to read them, uh, then they uh, go out of the house. They will, is, are gifted. So I, I did okay on, on that one. The second one, uh, a classic, uh, not so much. That I think that goal was too um, unspecified. I don't do well with unspecified goals. If I have a goal like read one book off your physical TBR each month, you know, that's very clear and very specific. But read a classic. Which one? And how and why? <laughs> um, the year before, in, in 2019, I had a much uh, better classics goal. Uh, it was to reread or read um, uh, all of Jane Austen's novels. And that, that worked like a charm. So I think I will do something similar for 2021. Uh, if I look at my uh, Goodreads list, I think I read, uh, if I remember correctly, I read four uh, classics, uh, including modern classics in 2020. So <laughs> not really <laughs> an achiever here. Uh, translated uh, work and uh, a book by a, um, a person of color or Asian author. I, I did okay. I read at least one translated uh, uh, work of fiction each month, a little more. It's 15 uh, in the year. And a third of my reading, fiction and nonfiction combined, a third of my reading was um, authors uh, of color or Asian authors. So, well, out of the four, I would say three I did well and one <laughs> I didn't do uh, well at all. Okay, onwards. The year-long challenges. A read around the world book club. Um, I'm, I've talked about this book club a lot. Uh, it's, it's run by Mel, who used to have a channel, uh, Mel's Bookland Adventures, but she is absent from Booktube at the moment, but hopefully will come back in 2021. Uh, but she runs that book club, and if you're not familiar, uh, it's um, a, a work of fiction or non-fiction by a female author from a different country each month. And each month, 
we vote, the members of the group vote, uh, we get three choices or something, uh, three countries, three authors, and then uh, we vote, vote and then we read that book. And I did pretty well in the first half of the year. Um, and then uh, from September onwards uh, or something, I just fell off the, the wagon for some reason. I didn't get the book in time. I didn't think of looking up which book are we, we are supposed to read. Um, and you know how that works once you start sort of, you know, not, not paying attention anymore, then it, it, it fades away. So I would say I did about half. Um, but it's certainly a challenge that I want to carry on uh, into the new year because it's it's fantastic. I've discovered so many um, authors, books uh, that I've never heard uh, of before, countries that I haven't even read anything um, uh, from. So it's it's certainly something that I will do again in 2021, like I did in 2019 and 2018. But I will try to put more focus on it, um, you know, that so that I remember to get the book, to look which book we, we will read, um, and actually buy the book and read it. Um, the second uh, year-long challenge is the Reading Women Challenge. That's also a challenge that I do every year, um, a, a link to the Reading Women website where you can find the challenge each year, uh, uh, for each year is, is also down in the description box. Um, and basically it's um, 24 prompts to diversify and, you know, broaden your reading. Like uh, uh, read um, a middle grade book by an author of color. Uh, or for the next year, one of the prompts is read a book where the cover design is designed by a female artist. Um, so it it's... I, what I really like about that challenge is that it makes you look for books, like with the cover design. I never pay attention who, who did the cover design. So it, 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 it forces you, quote unquote, in a good way to look for certain books. Um, and it also uh, encourages you to look at different aspects of books, you know, whether it's a trans author or whether it's an, uh, an author from you know, uh, an Asian country or... So I, I really, really like this challenge. And I completed um, the challenge for 2020. So I, yeah, me, <laughs> I did all the prompts. Um, there were two bonus prompts. Uh, one was read a book by Toni Morrison. I did that uh, just now, last month. Uh, Buddy read Love with Greg from Supposedly Fun. And the other bonus prompt uh, was read a book by Isabel Allende. I didn't do that because I read two or three books by Isabel Allende and her books and I, we just don't gel. So I don't see the point of forcing myself, you know, to read a book by an author whom I just don't like. Um, and the bonus prompt is always uh, read a book by a certain author. And I can already tell you for the 2021 challenge, uh, there is one of the bonus prompts is read a work by uh, Tsitsi Dangaremba. Dangaremba, Titsi, Titsi, Dangaremba. I butchered her name. I will leave her, her book, The Mournable Buddy, up here. Sorry for butchering the name, not looking that up. But I just don't like her work. So I will probably not do that prompt either. But the rest, um, yeah, I, I did well. So yeah, me. Uh, the next one was a, a year-long challenge that I co-hosted, Reading German Books 2020, together with... Uh, also with Mel. And the idea was that you, uh, to encourage us ourselves, so Mel and I and other readers to read more books originally written in the German language. You could read it in a translation if you don't read uh, German and written in the German language meant or means German authors, Austrian authors, Swiss author, or any other country uh, if the, the original text was written in German. And Mel and I did that because the year before, at least I, even though I am German originally and I live in Germany now again, I read very, very few German authors. I think like six or something. Uh, so this challenge helped me because there are certain levels and then you can achieve a level, you know, five books, you achieve one level, then six to ten books. 
Um, and I read 16 uh, books by in German by German or Austrian or Swiss authors, which is, you know, almost triple the amount that I did um, uh, the year before. So that, that, yeah, that was really great. And thankfully, the group will be carried over into 2021. Um, Liz, uh, Lizzie, she uh, uh, volunteered to host uh, because Mel and I hosted it for one year and I, we both thought that's enough. So she will take over. Thank you very much, Liz. So this, if you have, if you hadn't participated in the challenge in 2020, but if you think that might be something, you know, that appeals to you for 2021, it will go on. So check out uh, the link uh, to the Goodreads group um, and uh, let's see what Liz comes up uh, for 2021. But for this challenge, um, I did pretty well. So two out of three. Uh, then the fourth was um, uh, what I called an author spotlight challenge. Um, so I wanted to focus on one particular author. Uh, and for 2020, it was Louise Edrick. <coughs> Excuse me an American author whose work I really like, but I had a, a you know, I hadn't read all her backlist. Um, and uh, the idea was to read all her novels in the order of publication. Um, I'm doing this together with Terry uh, from Miss Terry B. And we did really well. We read one book each month. That was the idea. And we did that. So I, uh, we read 12 novels. There are four more to go, so we will carry the author spotlight, uh, or I will carry the author spotlight challenge over into 2021 um, until April. And then I'll see whether I will do something similar with another author or maybe a country or maybe a genre uh, could be. But it, it worked really well and it is... Um, I think it's really interesting also to see how an author develops. I mean, you have to like the author. You have to, the, the basic premise has to be that you are interested in that author and interested in that work. Because, of course, there, if you read 12 uh, novels by an author, I didn't love all 12 of them. So it, it's, you know, something because we didn't want a DNF. There was no reason to DNF, by the way. It was not a book in that, uh, in those, in, in the series of 12 that I thought, oh God, I, I wish I could DNF it. But of course there were books that I didn't love. I mean, yeah. But still, it, it's, uh, I, I really liked uh, this, this challenge um, to, you know, go with an author, the way the author uh, developed. And uh, in April, uh, we will have completed this challenge. So that's uh, great. Uh, let me see. Number five. The last one was reading the decade. And I failed abominably <laughs> with this challenge. The idea of this challenge was that I would look at books published between 2010 and 2019. And yes, Brian... I know that's not the decade because the decade started 2011. <laughs> I know that. But for the purpose of this challenge, I wanted to do 2010 until 2019 because the current year is 2020. So that didn't make sense to me. And I still called it day. Anyway, doesn't matter. And then the idea was for each year, uh, I would pick a fiction, um, a novel, a work of fiction and a nonfiction work that... Uh, was very prominent in that year that, you know, was talked about a lot that I missed uh, and that I still want to read. And I made it until uh, up to 2015. Uh, and then I read one book from 2016, but uh, 17, 18 and 19, I just lost interest, I have to admit. Uh, so it was not... Um, yeah, it was not an interesting enough challenge for me. Um, I thought the idea sounded better <laughs> than it turned out in the end. Uh, but yeah, sometimes you have to try something and you have to uh, see that and then it doesn't work. No, no big deal. But let me have a look. So there were five. Uh, I did well on 
uh, one, two, three of them. Uh, I did sort of okay-ish with the first one, Read Around the World Book Club, the first half of the year or the first two-thirds of the year. And I sort of failed with the last one. So that's that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Uh, anyway, so these uh, this is my wrap-up for my 2020 reading goals. Um, I'm interested, are you... Uh, are you doing reading goals at all? Do you look back if you have them uh, and, you know, sort of check in whether you uh, whether you met your goals? Uh, let me know. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And as always, I'm looking forward to your comments on other stuff as well. And I'll see you all soon in the next one.